So, this week we have some pretty interesting but also weird news regarding spaceflight. Let's start with the weird news, namely that Amazon Alexa will be tested on the unmanned lunar round trip mission Artemis 1. Okay, that is a bit bizarre, so we'll have to find out what that is about. Then we have a small update by NASA on how the Artemis missions will be conducted and how SpaceX's Starship will land astronauts on the moon. Then in Boca Chica, the launch tower is already preparing to catch Starship with its giant mechanical arms called Mechazilla. And lastly, the James Webb Space Telescope has now been fully deployed. Quite some awesome stuff, so stay tuned. So, the famous Artemis 1 mission. You know that unmanned mission where an Orion capsule will be launched on an SLS rocket, then will circle the moon and then will return back to Earth and plunge into the ocean? So basically the great test for Artemis 2, the first manned mission. Oh sorry, I mean of course uh, the first crewed mission. Because that's how you should say it nowadays or the PC police will come and arrest me. So the first crewed mission, Artemis 2, will then launch at some point, who knows actually when, probably sometime in 2023 or 2024. You know, NASA and SLS timelines are not really precise. Artemis 1 should have launched many years ago, so who knows when Artemis 2 will launch for astronauts on a lunar round trip mission. And these astronauts will apparently have the honor to use Amazon Alexa technology during the whole flight duration. Alexa, can we go to space? Sure, welcome aboard Orion. You know, so that next time they go online, they strangely get lots of suggestions and advertisement involving words they have used. Lockheed Martin, you know, the guys that have been working on the Orion capsule for 16 years now, announced on January 5th that they have been working with Amazon and Cisco on a project called Callisto that will be flown on the Artemis 1 mission. Callisto is a demonstration to see how Amazon's Alexa technology and Cisco's WebEx teleconferencing platform will be used on future crewed missions. Callisto would allow astronauts to use voice commands to access data, adjust spacecraft controls and interact with teams on the ground. Rob Chambers, Director of Commercial Civil Space Strategy at Lockheed Martin, detailed this in an interview. Quote, we want to show that this type of technology can help astronauts with some of those unique human interface technologies, making their job simpler, safer, more efficient." End quote. Nice! I assume it certainly doesn't have anything to do with Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin and the whole Blue Origin siding with old space thing. Hey, I mean, we should see it positively. This way at least some piece of Bezos technology will be able to venture beyond low Earth orbit. Joking aside, let's see what will come out of this when Artemis 1 will finally launch in summer 2024. It will be so nice then, I can already see how amazing this unmanned, sorry, uncrewed test flight of Artemis 1 will be with Amazon Alexa technology where no astronaut will actually be on board to use Alexa. It will be really awesome in fall 2025. Man, I really cannot wait for this Artemis 1 launch in winter 2027. Okay, so the sarcasm level is pretty high today, I apologize. Yet I would still be super happy if you would subscribe to this small channel here so that you won't miss any more sarcastic space news. Thank you very much in advance. But now the sarcasm level will be reduced again for the next piece of news, namely the awesome James Webb Space Telescope has been fully deployed. Last time we mentioned how the sunshade and the secondary mirror had been fully deployed and now the masterpiece itself has been unfolded, namely the giant primary mirror. The primary mirror of the James Webb Space Telescope namely consists of 18 hexagonal mirror segments made of gold-plated beryllium which are arranged perfectly such as to create the extremely impressive 6.5 meter diameter primary mirror. This mirror is the centerpiece of the JWST because as we know the larger the mirror of a reflector telescope the more light capture capacity it has. 
and the light capturing capacity is proportional to the radius squared of the primary mirror. So this thing boasts quite the insane light capturing capacity, namely 7.33 times as much as the Hubble Space Telescope. Soon the JWST will arrive at the L2 Lagrange point and will start the cooling down procedure to below 50 Kelvin and then after a few months we will have first light detection. Amazing times! Then NASA has given a small update on future Artemis missions. You know, after Artemis 1 and 2 will have launched in 2029 and 2031 respectively, detailing to us how Starship is going to land American astronauts on the moon again. So basically they now have confirmed what we knew already, at least viewers of most space channels, namely how exactly the Orion capsule is going to dock to the SpaceX Lunar Starship. We have talked about it a few times already, but in short, the Lunar Starship is launched from Earth, refilled multiple times in Earth orbit, then flies to the Moon and enters a lunar orbit. Then in 2033, the Artemis 3 mission will already launch on the amazing SLS rocket and also enter lunar orbit with the intent of docking with the Lunar Starship. Then after transferring to the Gargantuan SpaceX moon lander, they descend to the surface somewhere near the south pole of the moon. After the mission is completed, so probably after around two weeks since Starship allows for very long mission durations, they launch again with Starship and rendezvous with the Orion capsule. They transfer back to the Orion and return to Earth where they splash down in the ocean. The SpaceX Lunar Starship meanwhile remains in moon orbit as shown in the infographic. It will be interesting how SpaceX will refuel it. We were under the impression that the Lunar Starship will have to return to Earth for refueling, but of course sending a fully fueled up Starship fuel tanker depot to moon orbit might make more sense. Of course, some of the early lunar starships will return to the surface in order to be converted into large moon bases. NASA also mentions in a small sentence that, quote, once Gateway is flight ready and receives approval, it will launch from Kennedy Space Center and travel to lunar orbit, where it will act as a staging location for future missions, end quote. Not that the Gateway is necessary in any way, since one Starship has probably 10 times more interior pressurized volume than the entire Gateway, but hey, who are we to question this genius mission architecture? I am pretty sure that Boeing and Lockheed certainly had some very good reasons why the Lunar Gateway was absolutely necessary. Wow, that sounds so amazing, I really can't wait until 2036 when Artemis 3 will finally launch to see all these fascinating maneuvers. Of course, alternatively, we can also wait 10 years less until SpaceX will just launch their own private moon missions, completely without NASA's involvement. And in order to be able to achieve that, SpaceX is already busy testing the hardware for Starship. An essential part will be the humongous Mechazilla mechanical catching mechanism of the orbital launch tower at Boca Chica, Texas. It will catch the Super Heavy booster as well as the Starship and will allow for extremely ultra-rapid turnover. The whole reason why this system was invented by Elon Musk was to allow for extremely fast refueling of the Super Heavy booster and then afterwards for Starship. That way, when Starship and Super Heavy are caught in mid-air and placed on top of each other, both would be refueled and ready for the next launch in a very short amount of time. Such a fully automated, rapidly reusable launch system is completely unprecedented and will allow for massive amounts of Starship and Super Heavy launches. And now that the orbital payload capability of Starship and Super Heavy will be massively increased as we heard to as much as 220 metric tons to low Earth orbit, thanks to the 42 Raptor 2 engines of Starship and Super Heavy, extremely large amounts of payload can be brought up to low Earth orbit but of course also to the Moon and Mars. Because if we want to build settlements on the Moon and Mars, we will need to bring extremely large amounts of cargo payloads there. Thousands of metric tons and this can only be achieved by many many launches. Therefore the Mechazilla catching mechanism will be key in order to allow that and thus this will be a key system 
in order to make humanity a truly space-faring civilization. So, a lot of cool stuff has happened in space as always. I'm sorry for the especially sarcastic episode today. It won't be every time like this, promised. Thank you for watching, dear viewers. Our team here wishes you all the best. Have a nice day and on to the future.